What's going on? How's everyone doing? Shout out to you. Everybody else seems cool. Shepke! How do you say? Eat your popcorn. And your Coca Cola and relax. <laughs> anyway, tell Colin. I'm ready. What's going on? This is Colin. How's everybody doing? I hope you're having a great day so far. All right, I've got a good one. This is a landlord tenant case out of Texas. This is Judge Holmes. And man, this tenant has no idea what's going on. She thinks there are rules and laws that are in place that don't exist. And she talks the judge in circles to the point where, yeah. Judge pretty much just says goodbye. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Before I hit that play button, you know what to do. Hit the like and subscribe. Do your jump kick backflips. Let's go. Yes, Your Honor. Joshua Crowley for the plaintiff. Uh, Mr. Crowley, you're here on behalf of Eastwood, Mary Beth Eastwood. Yes, Your Honor. I have the pleasure. All right. On behalf of Francesca, Olivia, Bruce, and other occupants. Do we have anything yes, else you have to defend it, Francesca Bruce? Yes. Oh, well, yes, I'm here. Uh, good morning. Thank you both for being morning. here. All right. Is there anyone else here as a defendant to this matter, 24 1301 Eastwood versus Bruce and occupants? No, but um, just I'm not on the premises anymore. Like, I already left when they asked me to. So, All right, Miss Bruce, well, we're going to get there. Let me. Okay. We got to yeah, let the I'm plan appear first, like... though. All right. All right, then. Good morning, Mr. Crowley. Tell me why this eviction is sought. Your Honor, we're here on a, a basic non payment of rent case. Non payment. All right. Is there a lease? There is. And Standard how much is the track rent? lease. The lease is, provides for a rent of $3,196.38 per month. All right. Was any portion prorated? Actually, Sorry, any portion actually, subsidized? Actually, that wasn't. No, I, 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 Miss Bruce, 100%, I'm going to give you a chance to respond, but please don't just sort of jump out and interrupt okay. everything, right? Um, like, it's very, very ordered. You will absolutely get a chance. So if he's wrong or you want to disagree, just make a note and then bring it up, okay? All right. So, but Mr. Crowley, you're saying $31.96 and $0.38 cents is monthly rent. Was there any subsidy by the government? No, Your Honor. All right. And that number comes from an amendment to the lease contract that is attached with the petition as exhibit b both you and the defendant should have a copy of that okay and was this property under the cares act no your honor it was not what day was notice to vacate delivered september 27th and how was it delivered certified mail return receipt requested which i've confirmed through usps has been delivered to the property as well as first class mail all right and then what are the months of back rent that are alleged and being sought? Your Honor, Ms. Bruce owed seven, $71.38 in June, I'm sorry, in July, and then she did not make payment under August, September, or October. Prorated through yesterday, which is the first indication that I had that Ms. Bruce had vacated the premises, I have October's rent at $2,165.29. Do you know if Ms. Bruce has vacated? No, Your Honor, I don't. And frankly, uh, Ms. Bruce has written hot checks for thousands of dollars, and my client doesn't trust her word. I see that she's here live on screen, but I don't know what the property looks like. And my client lives in Horseshoe Bay, so she has not been able to independently verify whether or not she is uh, currently occupying the premises. All right. Is this a property that has keys? It is. Uh, Miss Bruce and her phone call yesterday indicated to me that she left them in the property along with the garage clicker. But again, we have not been able to independently verify that. Or when she says that she's left the premises, the only evidence that we have is her correspondence yesterday. Right. I'm sorry, phone call yesterday. All right. Thank you, Mr. Crowley. All right. Good morning, Ms. Bruce. So let me ask you a few basic questions and then I'll give you an opportunity absolutely to address or raise anything that, that hasn't been already brought up. Okay. So the Your first Honor, I have one more. 
Oh, oh go ahead, Mr. I Brown. have one more request. We're also seeking attorney's fees. Uh, I normally charge $325 an hour. Uh, I'm going to reduce the hours that I've spent on this case to three hours. I've spent more than three hours preparing the pleadings, preparing the notice of vacate, preparing the military affidavit, researching the property, corresponding with my client and with the tenant. Uh, I'm going to be asking for $975, which I feel is reasonable given that I've been practicing over 10 years. Um, this work has kept me from taking other work that I would otherwise be paying or receiving payment for. Um, the lease itself provides for that under section 29 of the standard truck lease, and uh, we've made that demand in our petition as well. Right. I didn't want to interrupt your honor, but uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to uh, not ask for that as well. Thank you, Mr. Crowley. All right, Ms. Bruce, under the lease. All right, so pretty straightforward. She got a, it sounds like a house. Um, a big house. I, I hope she has a family or something and that's not just by herself, but I'm going to say this and I hate that I'm judging her, but something tells me that she's one of those people that likes to look like she has a lot of things when she doesn't. So yeah, $2,000 for a prorated rent on the third week of October would, would put the rent or at least two thirds. So her rent's over $3,000. That that's a lot. That's a lot. Is the monthly rent $3,196.38? And I think he said that was per some type of an amendment. No, the lease that I have was $3,178.87. And Mr. Crowley, you said there was amendment, an amendment. Is that what changed that? Yes, Your Honor. That amendment was executed on May 31st, 2023 by the defendant. And if you'd like me to share my uh, screen. No, uh, I, I got it. Yeah, I'm, Thank you. Yep. I'm going to share my screen now. Ms. Bruce, this is a document that was provided by the plaintiff's counsel in advance of the hearing. This is what's been titled as Exhibit 2, uh, a residential lease amendment. And at the top here, I can see that it's for the address in question between a Mary Beth Eastwood and a Francesca Olivia Bruce. It's dated May 28th. And then it says that the rent is now changed to $31.96 and 38 cents. I and there's two electronic signatures, including one here, May 31st. I, I I don't remember that, but honestly, like that's not an issue. Okay. That, that's fine. That's like only like 20 more dollars all right and then he oh. says that rent wasn't paid in full for july and then not for august september october is that correct was rent unpaid for um, all of july and then nothing in october i'm sorry august september and october uh i was aware that i finished for july the 71 dollars that she's telling me i didn't pay her through my statements that's not correct so you know that's fine like you know just at this point you know it's all i just want to figure out is paying her <laughs> and like and because i'm not there i'm not on the premises anymore i, I left okay well unfortunately miss bruce leaving the day before the eviction doesn't prevent the case from being heard and it's right, right, they're but, it. so it's yeah it's important that we get the number correct because the judgment I'm about to give them is going to mm -hmm. be something that could impact your credit going forward. So I do want to be accurate with the money. He's given right. me proof that the rent went to thirty one ninety six and thirty eight cents, and he said that rent wasn't paid in full for July, and that nothing was paid for August, September, or October. So Mr. Crowley, how much is still owed for July? For July is seventy one dollars and thirty eight cents. All right, and then it's your testimony that nothing was paid for August, September, or October. That's correct, Your Honor. All right, Miss Bruce, is that correct? Let's focus on that one. Was rent paid at all for August? Uh, uh, no. Okay, and did you pay rent for September? No. And have you paid rent for October? No. Okay, and. When he says in July that you remain, you still owed seventy one dollars. Is is that something you say? No, you paid July in full. I from my from what I have, 
I paid that $71. And what do you so have that shows that? I mean, bank statements, like that's all I have. But right, like, that's, I, that's the all you need to prove you paid something. What does your bank statement reflect that you paid for rent in the month of July? Does it show $31.96 and $38? Well, I made I made payments, so I'd have to like go through to like calculate it completely. But from what I recall, I did pay that seventy one dollars. But if she's saying I didn't, and that needs to be paid too, and it's fine, that's fine. Like, but from what I was aware of, I paid that seventy one dollars for July. Okay. Mr. Crowley, how much were you seeking for this month of October? $2,165.29 prorated through yesterday, which is oh. when we received notice that she had vacated. We have still not received the keys, and so a surrender hasn't necessarily occurred under the, the lease. I heard you asking that question earlier. Mm -hmm. No, I would agree. If that's there's there's a question within that, I'd say I'll give you all both some information that may let you all understand kind of where where the law resides and then where parties can you know if something changes y'all can let us know what we can do all right so 3196 for all of august for all of september 71 dollars left over from july and then 2165 you said for this month yes your honor so i get ten thousand two hundred sixteen dollars um be right that is not the number i was i have yeah, I think it would help if I knew how to work my calculator. I went to law school for a reason, Your Honor. I, if I was any better at math, I'd be an engineer. Nope. I said the same thing. 8628, is that more? Yes, Your Honor, that's that's correct. Okay. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of back rent, $8,628, plus your cost of court and then attorney's fees in the amount of $975. If either party wishes to appeal, we'll set the appeal bond at twice the rent, so that'll be $6,000. $6,392. And then a bit of information for both parties. Uh, Could sound like y'all are otherwise you know, pretty reasonable and may work together on things. Y'all let me know. Okay. So, Mr. Crowley, Ms. Bruce, both sides now have five days to appeal this decision. If you want to appeal, again, the appeal bond is $6,392. Certainly, if you can't afford that, you may qualify for an affidavit of inability. Uh, if you wish to stay in the unit, that may not really be an issue anymore, but if you wanted to, you have to keep paying the full month of rent, the $31.96, but you pay that to the court and not to the landlord. If in the next five days, remember that's the appeal period, if in the next five days, parties talk to each other and there is some resolution or there is an agreement that maybe you think uh, you got your property back and y'all can work out the money differently. You can always, the plaintiff can always contact me within the first five days. If I have plenary authority, we can set aside a judgment. However, they don't have to do that, Ms. Bruce. Um, you have the right to appeal if you think that I've reached the decision in error today, right? Both oh. parties always have that right. You have at least five days to do it. But if neither party does anything, then the judgment is 8628 plus 975 in fees. And then the only additional money would be the cost of court. All right. Okay, and I'm just all right. I, I let that play a little long, but this is this is where the you know you might you might lose some brain cells listening to her questions. She talks in circles for the rest of the hearing. It's kind of funny and kind of sad at the same time. And yeah, the judge <laughs> Judge Holmes is done with it by the end. All right, here we go. It's just uh, for me, like you know. I it's not an issue. It's not that I don't want to pay her. Yeah. I do like I went through some really tough issues just job wise. Um, but she has all the information. When I moved in, I had my she told me to basically install my own lock, which is an electric lock. She has all the keypad numbers to that as well. I sent her keys, three keys in the mail. And then when you also enter the property, there's the garage door and the keys there. So for her to not go and check the property to so to take the property, like you can't evict someone when they're not in the property anymore. So I, I just want that to be put it, into I don't consideration. Find the not that you're not still a tenant. There's not been enough evidence. You did not bring anything but your word, and he's brought his word. And so when I have both of you being equal, I find the monetary situation to be more persuasive. 
Right. So that's why I'm trying to understand why you can do that. But I don't I don't find the you have the testimony today that you moved out yesterday and left the keys there. I don't find that sufficient to overcome what they've otherwise met with their burden of non-payment case. Yeah, well, I, the payment's not like the issue. And I, I, I moved out days ago, but I don't but want to eviction. They have won on non-payment. The only way I would throw the case out because you moved is if you had actually moved and they, I had confirmation that the keys and everything had been returned. But I find it too soon for you to say I did it yesterday and they can just walk in and get it. But you can appeal my decision or my ruling about that if you want. Well, how do I make someone go and surrender their own property when I'm not there? Ms. Bruce, that's getting the legal advice, which I can't give. Call an attorney about the, the specific minutia of your situation and how you moved and the keys and all of those things. What I'd say is that today, though, they meet their burden for a non-payment. And you Wait, absolutely can't I, appeal. Okay, but I'm just like, my whole thing is the, having the eviction part on my record when not I, in the payment. I got that, Ms. Bruce, but I'm found it in their favor today. If you want to avoid an eviction becoming final on your name, you're going to have to appeal or maybe work something out with the landlord. And I cannot force you on to negotiate. If you really want to know maybe some ideas or suggestions, that's legal advice. You've got to call your own lawyer for that because I can't take ones. I can't tell you how to negotiate better with the landlord. And I can't tell the landlord how they can better evict you. I have to give you just very simple information. And here, when I hear your testimony and I hear theirs, more likely than not, I find it true that they've proven that you've been in possession of the property and quite likely may still be in possession. I, I find that to be true, but there has not been enough to overcome the burden that you have possession greater rights than them at this point and that you still owe the money. And those two things together give rise to the eviction. All right, but you can't appeal. Um, you can So appeal. I'm, but I've already tried to, I already told the landlord all of this and I'm not getting a response. And so I don't know why she got the, the property. Mr. Bruce, I can't like, give you any more information than this because we're going to kind of go in a loop here. What I'm say is that today I find against you and in favor of the landlord. And if you don't appeal or otherwise come to some situation with the tent with the landlord, that eviction will become final in your name on day six. So, but what if she, she's not responding to me? You have the right to appeal, and it has nothing to do with whether she ever calls you back. Please contact a lawyer, Miss Bruce. Or legal aid, any of those things I highlighted this morning. You you got to understand what you're doing as a tenant here. You absolutely have the right to do something, even if the landlord ignores you and refuses to call you back. You have the right to appeal. And my clerk's putting that information in the chat box again for you. Please contact someone to understand your situation because I can't explain it to you. Yeah, I just, I, I, I just, it's very hard to. Um, I, I don't. Eat understand this because i'm i'm not there so i don't know why she won't go and get her own property back like okay all parties of that matter are excused there's no further questions thank you all thank you <laughs> i told you judge paul's like all right I, I can't explain this again but i already explained it to you you gotta talk to someone else uh yeah this one was a little frustrating I I still go back to why does she have that big of a house? She looks young. I, I don't think she has a big family. I mean, I don't know. It just why? It doesn't make sense. All right. Anyways, that's it. Uh, you guys have. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And yeah, if you haven't hit the like button already, please hit the like button. Until next time, bye. Twenty-four thirty.